Hello, welcome back to my channel. As you guys all know, I'm Nikki Starkiller, and today I got Tara. Tara is a trans woman. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Good. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you, Tara. Uh, well, I am an 80s child. I am the product of not having any information growing up as a kid. And we didn't have the internet back then. And when we finally did get the internet, um, there really was no information about what was going on with me. I always knew from an early age that I was different, couldn't put a label on it, didn't know what was going on. It wasn't until my late 20s where I found out what was going on and talked with um, a therapist for a while. And then I moved on to a doctor and the doctor explained to me what was going on and I said, well, that makes me feel a lot better. What are the next steps? And they said, well, you start hormone replacement therapy. And then later on in life, if you want surgeries to correct anything, you can do that. But as far as my life, I started working at age 13, got my first paying job or not paying, but tax paying job where I have to pay. They, they take a portion out of your paycheck for taxes at 14 making four and a quarter an hour. And as I grew up through my teenage years, I had a couple other jobs. I was also enlisted in the U.S. and SCC, which is United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps. I prepped my entire life from adolescence to teenager to young adult to be in the military. And I've already earned my E3. So when I go in there, I'm already higher ranked than everybody else and getting paid more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. One month before boot, I was getting married to my first wife, high school sweetheart. And I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So that screwed up that life plan. And I only had that life plan. I didn't have anything for backup. I didn't know what to do. So I you know, talked with my family and my friends and they said, well, why don't you try either the police department, the fire department or become a paramedic? So I chose uh, the fire department. I was a firefighter for a while until my Crohn's really started affecting me being able to do a job and I didn't want to put my brothers and sisters in danger so I quit that I opened I started my own event medical business with my with a partner a business partner and we did that for about 10 years we did pride events um, as a also a multitude of other different events but we did pride that was one of our most favorite events to do mm -hmm. and after we got severely underbid for that job. I just worked um, a couple other jobs until I got to the point where I don't need to work anymore. I'm now a, basically a housewife and I'm enjoying that. I'm on my third home. You got yourself as a sugar mama. Mm, yeah, I kind of guess you could say that. <laughs> I mean, without me, she is lost. No, do you get to disability or something? Uh, I do, yes. Okay, good. Because I know there's still some a lot of people that still like wait on like disability, like, and they still don't have it. Like after like five, ten years, like what the fuck? Yeah, it's gotten yeah. worse over the years versus when I signed up. All I had to do was just forward a letter from my my GI doctor to the the uh, determination office. That said, I'm, I suffer from an incurable and very painful disease, and that was about it. Nowadays, people literally have to jump through hoops. Like you said, they're waiting forever. Um, and I paid into the system big time as I was mm -hmm. working. So I get that. Um, and, oh, then I hope course, so. mm -hmm. and then, of course, you know, I kind of, I have my girlfriend. We share the bills, and mm -hmm. we're happy. That's basically my story. I've just... I'm like a semi-elder in the trans community. How old are you now? 40. Same here. Like, so, like, basically my mom, we, we traced it back to, like, around the age of 13 for me. Now, I was different, but that was 1995. Yep. Was it, was it, was the instant messenger a thing yet? Asex location, ASL, over there. 
We remember AOL Instant Messenger. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. AOL. And you do ASL. Yeah. A sex God, location. <laughs> I remember those days. The the dial up sound trying to get on the internet. I mean, remember when, when we upgraded to 56, 6, 56. Oh, the 56K modem? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yep. Damn cat. That's actually oh. my girlfriend's hobby. She likes to build computers. She's a computer nerd, and that's all she ever does. Yeah, I built my own. It's like, it now sits underneath my desk with like a piece of lattice over it. So this is... See that one? Yeah, Cleo. Cleo. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Stop drinking the water. You have your own water, Cleo. Thank you. If I can get out of the way here. Come on, work with me here. There we go. Uh, so what is it that you wanted to talk about? So you, you basically stitched one of my things when I it was the violin with uh, people calling me transphobic and why... Am I not allowed to have an opinion? Oh, so, yeah, I've... I get labeled as transphobic, uh, internalized transphobia. I'm also homophobic. I also support white supremacy, and I am racist. Apparently. Wow. <laughs> I'm um, also a turf. I've kind of gotten those labels myself. Um. But I definitely was watching one of your lives one night where you had the green screen up. Yeah. And you were talking in the green screen. You don't agree with. Um, it says, Let's screen. have a discussion with one of the most hated uh, trans women on TikTok. It says no transitions under the age of 18. Asterisk. Um, trans women are trans women. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't carry tampons. And no such thing as a kid-friendly drag show. Yeah. And again, what is your stance on drag queens? It's adult entertainment. It can be. Well, so it's it's a der derivative from burlesque. So, like, now it's a, like, and I understand, like, drag show entertainment. I actually enjoy them and stuff like that. But... Mm -hmm. To have kids go to them, uh, no. Um, especially the way that, you know, there's there's three elements within a drag show. There's the entertainers, there's the venue, and then there's also the um, the promoter. Mm -hmm. You know, it, could there be a kid friendly drag show? Yes, of course. If all three of those those people were in line with the same thing, mm -hmm. but a lot of times, like, um, if it happens once, it's happened too many times. Like. Especially like the Austin, the place in Texas during the Christmas, Christmas drag show that was an all ages drag show, and a woman came out with uh, boxes over her boobs, and opened up the box and said, "Look, look, it's Santa got me." Is that is that basically inappropriate? But I also heard about from that performer, that performer is actually very risque, and you know normally they, from talking to other people like. That performer shouldn't have been at the all age drag show because of how how risque they are. So like, so once again, that's why I said there's no such thing as kid friendly drag shows because you have stuff like this happening. Now, if the promoter and the entertainers and the venue are all in line with with having a kid friendly drag show, then yes, there 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 definitely could be. Mm -hmm. Still not saying that it is. It would have to be. Down, di dialed down a lot. You know, obviously the makeup is fine. You know, the makeup, the hair, and stuff. But like to be fully dressed, not teaching kids to twerk. You know, like that's. I mean, like once again, we we seen that happen at a drag queen story hour. So like, like after he was done, they were done reading. Like they were teaching them how to twerk, and I really don't think that. That's a, appropriate for like eight, nine, ten years old. Now, if there was a 15, 16, 17 year old there, that's very different. So, like, when we're talking all ages, we're, we're, there's obviously a difference between kids, teenagers, and adults. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, kids, no, teens, 
there there's exceptions for things because I know that the, there can be kid friendly, but the synopsis of it is that there's not enough. There's not enough people like being all together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I can definitely see eye to eye with you on a lot of that. I really do. Um, I can speak from experience when I was working a job uh, with my event medical business at a pride event and people were coming into the event and showing off their kinks and fetishes. Like for example, I'm sure you've seen it. Leather boys. Yeah. And the dog masks and all that. And, and it was like really borderline nudity for a couple of people too. They were barely covered up. Um, and there were kids there. It, I, of course, don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. A pride event is to celebrate our pride within the acronym to celebrate everything that we've been going through throughout the year and dealing with all these straight cishet turfs and bigots and everything. Well, that's why um, I don't celebrate pride because I can't I can't get in. I can't get into the aspect of throwing a party for we we need it so much more than just having a party. You know what I mean. We need mm -hmm. help with the the uh, medical stuff and things like as far as that therapy and stuff like that. You know, I'm a, I'm basically an advocate of like saying like a lot of people saying that we we as trans people can't get medical help. I've had all four of my surgeries paid for. Mm -hmm. You know, but then again, I'm privileged because I have health insurance. Mm -hmm. No, I think I'm privileged because I have the health insurance with a really good company being Amazon. You know, I pay $9 for my medical a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's $13.50 for eyeglasses and dental, too. So mm -hmm. I pay $13.50 a, a week for health insurance. Mm -hmm. I have a $1,000 deductible, $2,000 out of pocket. The Amazon pays for $500 of that deductible. So, like... I've already reached my deductible already since January 1st, you know, like, but me being saying that, Hey, I live in South Carolina. I can get this stuff done. You know, I would, I may have been the first person to get a uh, bottom surgery in the state, the state of South Carolina, but like I'm, I'm pushing boundaries and I'm pushing the fact that, Hey, there is help for us out there. Don't say that they're, that they're not. Because the whole thing is like getting a decent job. Yeah, but like people are like, you work for one of the worst companies in the world. I work for one of the biggest companies in the world, but they they treat me fair. You know, maybe have I have I moved up in the company because of me being transgender? Probably, you know, because they need that. They need the inclusivity. They need to have the diversity and stuff like that. But Still, like I, I make this. I'm we when you become an Amazon employee, we all have the same benefits, you know. And I've actually had one of my friends like join in the Amazon 30 days later. She had her boob surgery, she had her surgery, and she worked one day. She came back for one day and then left. Well, I would say that's one way of working the system. <laughs> Does it make it right? Mm, it's questionable. No, I, I say I say no, but like, I, I make I make damn good money. I yeah, but to say that I'm privileged to have health insurance, no, don't don't anybody like. The problem is, is like we have a lot of small businesses. Small businesses obviously don't have the health insurance as big corporations can end up doing. Mm -hmm. Should Walmart be paying health insurance better for their employees? Yes. Not charging them an arm and a leg. Same thing with like Target. Same thing with all these big box stores. But like when you deal with like corporations, when I'm me, I, I have the same insurance as anybody else does who's not in corporate. Corporate has a very different stance, but mm -hmm. being in the warehouse, in the warehouses and stuff, from the general manager down to from a tier nine, a tier one to a tier nine, they all have the same benefits, mm -hmm. and they all pay the same amount. You know. Yeah. But like, 
there is trans health care out there. Don't say that we, we don't have trans trans care. I'm a, pro, I'm a product of somebody who has gotten trans care. I'm actually getting liposuction done in, in a couple of weeks again. Why? Because it's ne medically necessary for my transition. And mm -hmm. they approved it for the second time. This time we're just doing cleanup and that's it. You know, but like I've actually had people like shit on me because they're like, you're getting boobs, which is cosmetic surgery. Yeah, but it's ne medically necessary for my transition. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where you find those holes. And of course, I have paperwork. I have paperwork from a psychiatrist. I have paperwork from my primary care doctor. And I have uh, paperwork from a um, uh, psychiatrist who says that I have uh, gender dysphoria. Mm -hmm. you know, which I would, in which me, you have to have gender dysphoria in order to be trans. But I personally, I have only one non-binary friend. As a 40-year-old transgender woman, I only have one non-binary friend. So I've been taking the time to try and make more non-binary friends because I want to know more about them and what they go through. And I've heard anecdotally on TikTok and other social media platforms that when people say you don't, uh, you have to have gender dysphoria in order to be trans, I've heard people say, well, no, that's not true. And going beyond that, I can't honestly offer an opinion on because I know I don't know anything about it or know enough about it to talk about it. Yeah, so in order to get surgeries, especially like through insurance, you have to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Right. Yeah, I know I know a I know a trans man who's on TikTok and Instagram. I'm not gonna name his name, but I have obviously stitched him before that um he has gender euphoria. But in order for him to get his boobs taken off he had to say that he was diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Mm -hmm. So like, so you're telling me a psychiatrist diagnosed you with gender dysphoria, so therefore you have it, you know? So having gender euphoria, that's that's almost like for us, uh, auto, what is it, autogonophilia? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. That, that's, what, that's what I think like gender euphoria is there, you know? But as far as like, uh, you know, gender gender dysphoria, which is actually a mental disorder, which is actually in the DSM five still, you know. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of people don't want, sorry, don't want to like say that it that it is in the DSM five when, and it's not a mental illness. And actually, it's, it's not a mental illness. It's a mental disorder, you know. So like, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. But like, we have one of the few disorders or mental um, disorders that have surgery as part of its um, as part of its um, therapy and medication and stuff like that, you know, where a lot of people do find it weird, you know, but like, I think it would, for me, um, gender dysphoria obviously has been there for a long time, uh, just didn't know what it was, kind of like you, just didn't know what it was. Uh, finally figured it out. Um, then, you know, I, I did a lot of drugs and stuff like that. I did um, hyper-masculine myself to try to hide it. But I came to a point where I was like, you know, there's no point in me hiding it anymore, you know, because of the fact that, you know, I try to unalive myself or try to commit suicide twice, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a, grown, as a grown man. Mm -hmm. I recently, I, and actually I got to take back what I said. I totally forgot. One of my best friends in the whole wide world, um, she met me on YouTube because uh, I was a, con a product reviewer. Mm -hmm. And I was reviewing one of Blunt Effects's um, scents. I believe it was Jamaican something. And every single stick from that bag that I would light up, it would just go out. And so she sent me, uh, or she made a comment in my comment section. And ever since then, we've been best friends. And then fast forward to today, uh, one of her uh, 
step kids came out as I believe non-binary and from what they have been telling her, they just want to be looked at as a person rather than a she, her, he, him, Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I think that's the general consensus for non-binary people. They don't want a label. They just want to be looked at as a person. Yeah. But they, but they, they still get that label though. They label themselves. You know, a lot of that is also like, which sucks is there's a lot of self ID out there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What is so your like, opinion on all of these neo pronouns? If you have a neo pronoun, I'm just going to call you they them. Wouldn't it be? F- I mean, I I sort of agree with you, but also on the same token, I have to show compassion to other people that are going through this. And wouldn't it be a fair statement to say? that neo pronouns aren't as ridiculous as we think because every day we're constantly coming up with new words, new terms and changing definitions of already existing words and terms. No, because they're they're obviously definitely personalized pronouns and some of them are absolute nonsense. I'm sorry. Uh like especially around Christmas time like how you can use like tree and tree self um what like um like ornament ornament and ornament self like really come on or now they're even using emojis emojis are actually now a symbol of like their pronoun but at the end of the day why do we even really yes we use pronouns in everyday situations but like you're only using pronouns in the third person so me referring to you as she or her I'm not a call you that when I'm talking to you, you know what I mean? Right. If I'm talking about you, like, yeah, you know, she, she this and she that, you know, her that. But, like, at the end of the day, this is those personalized, like, very, very self. Actually, actually, I find very kind of ridiculous, you know. And I understand, but that's where the person, uh, personalized program, sorry, personalized pronouns like come into the play mm-hmm. you know because that's exact so now you're creating more labels you know what i mean mm-hmm. i i have okay. to admit that the fairy fairy self as actually sounds kind of cute in my opinion cute yes but it's but <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous yeah it, it can be <laughs> I just never, I'm not in a position where so, I have any friends like that. For me, for me, neo pronouns, if you have a neo pronoun, I'm going to call you they, them. Sorry. You know, I, I use, the, I generally use the, you know, he, him, she, her, and they, them. I don't. Wouldn't yeah. you, like, can you concede to the fact that, like, say, someone like Jordan Peterson, um, constantly using the wrong pronouns for somebody um, because of how he feels about it. Wouldn't you want to be as accommodating as possible to somebody, especially if you don't use their right pronouns, it hurts them? Well, we, we understand that there is people in the world that, that can be, that had their, their freedom of their own speech and their own Mm -hmm. things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's where like, would it hurt if if I was talking to Jordan Peterson and he just called me as he? I don't I don't I don't know that I would really find it he, but like, you know, I think sometimes like we have to have thick skin and stuff like that. Like, uh, but most of the time I don't deal with somebody who is being ignorant. But, yeah, well, that know, makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, like I ain't got time for that. You know. Yeah. I agree with um, but you. I understand the difference between ignorance and somebody just not knowing. Yeah. But if Jordan, if I was talking to Jordan Peterson, I'd be like, "Hey, my tits are in your face. Can you just at least call me she?" You know. Yeah. Or whatever. But again, if I was talking to him, we wouldn't be referring to each other in the in a third person. Right. So. I I totally agree with you about having thick skin, and I definitely have the thickest of thickest skin. But here recently, 
um, that whip cracked, uh, this whip cracked my skin open when Trump made his ridiculous and very dangerous. Who's well, um, just going to say that anyways? We know that. Yeah. And me being are they, are they obviously stopping it for people under the age of 18? Yes. And I think that it should be done. But uh, I, I do I do understand that there is trans youth. I accept that there is trans youth. You know? Yeah. But for 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 most of it, most of the most of the kids these days, by the time they reach adulthood, no longer identify as the opposite gender. And that's like fa actually affecting the real trans kids. Now, if we didn't have such a this explosion of gender identity, um, and it's blown up so much that we would actually have like real data, and we would know like, hey, these these amount of but there's again there's a lot of self ID, there's a lot of uh, kids in school like finding clicks. Now it used to be the jocks were like the cool people in the school. Now. Now the cool people seem to be the LGBTQ, or as some people call it, the alphabet mafia. And they're actually, you know, they, if they, like, like I get the bathroom issue as adults, but the bathroom issue as kids or in school should be mm -hmm. in here. You know, there's a reason. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, bathroom debate, I've had that too many times. The only solution that I can think of is that in, in new buildings, you have it in the code for new construction that, hey, there's a certain amount of bathrooms that, that are basically individual, you know, um, a one one person bathroom, you know, and then you still have male and female or men and women, you know, I think because there's some people out there who are just going to want to use the personalized bathroom anyways. Um, and also like people are like, what about like having trans women bathrooms and trans men bathrooms? No, because then we would know that there would be people waiting outside the bathrooms, like uh, especially what we call like tranny chasers mm -hmm. or people that would just want to make fun of people, you know, mm -hmm. they know that they're trans. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which that would just bring a lot of hate. So, like, the only way that we can fix the bathroom situation is in new construction and in, in building codes and stuff like that. Because obviously, some of these old places, you, you, you can't fix it. It costs way too much money for them to. Mm -hmm. Like this is definitely something that you and I are different or uh, differ from when it comes to the trans youth and the puberty blockers and all of that. If I would have had that option back when I was younger, I would have taken it without question um, to have better results than what I have today. I mean, I'm a big yeah, I'm but, a big but, person. but you could probably have worse results. How so? Taking said puberty blockers because we know that there, there's stuff that there's side effects of puberty blockers that affect people down the road, especially within bone density. Couldn't the same thing be said about children's aspirin? Uh, sure. But yet we give but it to it, them. But right? it's a different dose. It's the same thing. Like people are like, the the dose that they give to trans kids as opposed to cis kids going through. Like, let's say we had a, a cis girl having her period at eight. You know, the dose that they give the cis children are different than the ones that they give the trans, trans children. It's the dosage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's all about the dosage and the use, you know. Obviously, yeah. they're using higher dosages because they're, they're trying to stop the, uh, what is the pituitary gland from actually pumping out these hormones. But the problem is, is that that gland is pumping out these hormones. We're not stopping it. We're stopping the synthesis. Ah, we're stopping the hormones from synthesizing, you know, but eventually that gland is going to run out. And if you stop it for a year or you synthesize it for a year, you know, that gas tank has already been, they've still been pumping out hormones. So to say that it's a theoretically, it's a stop. Yeah, it stops things from synthesizing, but it's still it's still gonna go on. You know, we we as human beings, Homo sapiens, that's the species that we are, uh, need to go through puberty because it not only develops our our sex organs and stuff like that, but it also develops muscles, uh, all your central nervous system, your brain, you know, 
bones, obviously, um, everything like lungs, you know, everything gets changed, you know. So, uh -huh. like, to not go through a healthy puberty, to like, if I didn't have went through the healthy puberty that I went through, I wouldn't have been able to get single stage uh, penile inversion, where they actually use the skin of my 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 unit to be able to make the canal. You know what uh -huh. I mean? I didn't yep. have what was called like a micro penis, as some of these people have. Yeah, obviously it's easier to have, but then there's also the rates of potential sterilization. We already know that that puberty blockers can essentially, especially amongst males, uh, assign male at birth as opposed to females at birth. You mm -hmm. know, it's not really. It still happens, but it's not as pertinent as it is with assigned uh, male at birth. So, like, you know, like, you starting on spiral, your sex drive went down, but also your testosterone went way down. And, you know, there's there's that thing when you get it down that long and it's down there for a lot, that long a time, we're essentially sterilized. You could be off of it for, like, five years before you could potentially even have a kid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, there's, there's all these side effects that obviously we know. That, that happens. We don't want it to happen. So, like, there's still, for me, there's also still not enough longitudinal data in, in for it, you know, because the, obviously a lot of our elders didn't use puberty blockers, you know. A lot of our elders actually used, like, <laughs> birth control and stuff to get our food. You know, they went through a lot of, a lot of like, let's just say shit. They essentially had to run away from home, you know. I talked to Buck Angel. I think you brought that up, right? I, I talked to him. You know, he's been, yeah, he's 60 years old, but he's been on hormones for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should actually listen to him. And, like, he is, what was it? His cervix fused to his uterus. Atrophied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know his story. As a matter of fact. Very painful. He was one person that I looked up to growing up and the only person I knew of that was going through the same thing that I was. And I would say for about 30, I would say about 36 years of my life, I looked up to him until he popped off at me and said that I was being misogynistic. Um, and ever since then, he, he refuses to... Um, well, obviously, we as trans women can be misogynistic. Well, I'll let me tell you what happened. Uh, I believe it was International Women's Day or Wom Women's Month. And mm -hmm. if you're familiar with the vagina, I believe it's called the Vagina Museum or something like that. They took the time and included us trans women in that day. And I took to Twitter, and this was before my Twitter account um, got hosed, but I, I thanked them. I said, that was very, very kind of you to do that. And I, I personally appreciate it, considering the fact that uh, we trans women have a bigger bullseye on our back than, say, cisgendered women. Cisgendered women have a bullseye on their back as well, but I was not invalidating that. He then called me misogynistic, and when I asked him why, he just simply muted me. He has never blocked me, but um, ever since then, I've just been on this um, fly-on-the-wall type person where I watch his lives, and he he did a live here on uh, TikTok where he was talking about a puberty blocker and flat-out lied about it. How? He said that it was irreversible. They are. They're not. They're not reversible. Do you do you have any sources to cite on that one? Because of the fact that they, because of the fact of the stuff that they can do. You you did say earlier that there is not enough. Um, not enough valuable. data, but they're not. They're not completely reversible, as the trans community says, because they do have effects. Right. They're blocking that puberty from happening no, they're, they're so stopping right. yes exactly yeah and when you start and then the effects down the road being like bone density being sterilization being not growing having your growth spurts and your you know like 
We need that kind of stuff. Well, let me ask you this. For somebody who is absolutely positively and equivocally transgender, say within the teenage years or actually throughout their lives, do you think that they really care about all that? What, kids? Yeah, as they're growing up and getting older and new data is being presented to them and also the side effects as they get older, they stick to it because they know who they are. So and why they can't they still go through a healthy puberty so that way they can live a much better life? Look at me. Yeah, but you're, you didn't take puberty blockers. I couldn't. Didn't know that we could. Had yeah, exactly. I known that I could have, I would have. I'm, I'm, it's like I, I, I actually hate that statement. Like that people say that. Like if why? I could, could I go? Could I go back in time? No, I wouldn't. Because for for 36 years, that person, that man, made the woman I am today. Made the trans person, transsexual woman I am today. Are you speaking of like your personality and what makes you you? Mm, to an extent, but uh, I've obviously have made leaps and bounds difference in like especially the way my life is, the way how I live my life, the way that I present my life. Mm -hmm. You know, but like, w would I have gone back? No, because all those experiences, all those, you know, from made me the, the strong person that I am today. Okay, million dollar question. If you could have gone back in time and taken pu puberty blockers and started as early as you could, don't you think you'd be a lot happier with the results that you would get now? Or? No, I'm, I'm actually really happy with the results that I have now. Okay. And of course, like I said, that's where we differ. I wish I could have gone through it. And yeah, I'd be a lot happier than I am now. But what makes me a woman is what's would on you? the inside of me. Well, would you really know if you were much happier? Oh, yeah. How? <laughs> How do you know? We, we don't know. My face? I mean, it would have, uh, once I started, it's if I would have been able to start the way that I wanted to, yeah, I'd look way more feminine than I do now. So, but that that leads to the thing that trans women are trans women, you know. Well, I, love yourself for who you are. That's easier said than done for a lot of people. How? It's it's an easy. Have you ever heard so, the expression that we are our own worst judges of character? Oh yeah, we are. We are. I know, I but like you and, I look at you right now. And you definitely pass. You have nice features that you pass. And that, of course, is my opinion, the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. But if I were to say that to uh, another trans femme, they'd be like, oh, thank you. I just don't feel it. I'm the same way. If somebody says, oh, you're absolutely gorgeous. You're a beautiful woman. I usually just chuckle a little bit and go, no, I don't believe that. But if I would have had the tools and the options back then to look a little bit different than what I do today, yeah, I'd be a lot happier. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that you can actually answer that question because it didn't happen. It should have, would have, could have. Yeah, it's one of those situations. I agree. So, like, you know, so for me, like, going back in time and changing it is very, what, anecdotal, I guess? Could be, yeah. I mean, because we don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I, I know that I'm much happier. I'm actually yeah. kind of glad of the the stuff that I I've done throughout my life has made me the person I am today. So, and that's that's why I like one of my other topics is trans women or women, is because accept ourselves for being trans women. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. We don't get periods. We don't get birth. Fantastic, you know. Do yeah. I still have to sit down and go pee? Yes. Not exactly <laughs> fun and sometimes, but like, you know, there, there's stuff that we do share with like uh, women and female traits. You know, I say that we emulate them. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're not, we're not women. We emulate what women and females are. You know what I mean? So yeah. an emulation cannot be a woman. And then the other thing is like, 
Could a could a trans woman ever be a cis woman? Not in my lifetime. Oh. <laughs> I definitely have to sit down because and now now there's there. the definition for females that's actually has a social connotation to it. So like we can't even say that's biological. So the, the closest thing to a biological is saying cis woman or cis man, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what they were assigned to at birth, you know. Yeah. So like now my thing is like, you know, what is a woman? A woman is an adult human female. That's one of the the things. But like, can can a trans woman be a female? Now it has social condensation. So according to certain dictionaries, yes, a trans woman could be a female. So, but when we also know that only females had the capacity to give birth, when I say capacity, no, I know that not all of them, but that's one of their traits is they have a capacity to give birth. And that's why, that's why trans men can have babies because biologically or through their, through their sex, they are females, which have the capacity to give birth, yeah. you know? So to say that men can give birth, I would say no, men cannot give birth. But trans men can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I I personally don't have a choice when it goes when it comes to using the bathroom. I have to sit down to pee, because I I am still a sex worker online. I'm just taking a sabbatical, but I have. You talk dirty, period. huh? You talk dirty. Do I talk dirty? Yeah. It just depends. Is that what you do? I'm, no. <laughs> um, I, do, I do custom work online. Like if they want certain types of pictures, you know, clients. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just all about nudity and maybe just, you know, getting off on camera or something as simple as feet pics, you know, because there's a lot of people out there who are very specific about what gets them off. Oh, and yeah. One of the things that I went through with a client, and I got paid very well to do this. Uh, was to um, get certain piercings down there. And I, of course, am a non-op trans woman. I have not had any surgeries for my gender or anything. So when I got a Prince Albert, um, I'm not just peeing out of one hole. I'm peeing out of two holes. So I can't yeah. stand up to to pee anymore. I had what was called an apodavia. I've never heard of that one. What is that? It goes, it's a barbell that goes straight through the head. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, My surgeon actually took it out when I, uh, she's like, you got to take that. No, you can do that when you do the surgery. But that was through the meat, right? It didn't go through the urethra, did it? It went, it went straight up through where the V is. It went straight up through. So there was a, there was a ball on top and a ball on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> I had that in there since I was what eighteen. Wow. But yeah, I got I got paid very well to get that piercing plus twenty seven others down that there, and I did crazy. those myself. Ooh. Like I said, the I got paid very well. Actually, be very very dirty though, because you're like yeah. peeing on it. So. I plus I, I don't think it really hurts because you're only essentially piercing the urethra. And believe it or not, the 27 other piercings I gave myself, those hurt more than the Prince Albert yeah. going through the urethra. It, I barely felt anything. It's actually, yeah. I mean, I like piercings, but like... <laughs> People Money are like, oh, she's... I don't care. <laughs> I'm not piercing my nipples, sorry. Mine aren't big enough to get pierced. I, I tried it one time and it came out. Not happening. So but then people are like, but you got this. I got my Setham ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also stretched it one act, right after I had my surgery because I was on some good painkillers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. I had to take my uh, PA out for my surgery on the 17th. And of course, when I got home and I tried to put it in, um, I was on pain. I'm on pain meds still, but I was really loopy and I dropped the ball and it rolled underneath my entertainment center. So now I, I don't even have that in. Yeah. I'll wear my glass one again. When I, if I, if I have this for my next surgery, I have one that's glass. 
no. it's just a little task. So. But I think, um, you know, going back to our original conversation, like I told uh, my friends, there's some things that I agree with you on. Mm-hmm. And there also is things that I don't agree with you on that. And I'm, like I said, I am not the type of person to come out and attack I, people I don't because think they have a difference I'm... of opinion. Well, you, 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 you say that I don't debate. I like doing discussions more than debating. I, okay. like, I, I, go, on, I go on other people's pages to debate. Yeah. You know, what was it? What was it? Sunday? Last Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was five girls against me. And I'm just like, you, you yeah. guys, you could try to tell me that, that I am a woman or that they're a female. I personally said that because of what I saw on your green screen. It said, you know, no debates or I don't debate. No, it says let's have a discussion. It doesn't say say no debate. I try not to have people debate because like I say, I much rather have discussions within my own. I agree with you. Cause I like, I've talked to a lot of other trans people and like, even though they, some don't agree with me, they at least get each other's stamp. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's neat. What's needs to happen more often is more discussion, less debating, Mm -hmm. you know, like if you, if you want to call yourself a woman, that's fine. But you want to call yourself a female? Come on. Let's be real. You actually had one of my friends on and, and talked with her uh, recently. Yeah. Milani. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's in Mil- my Discord server. Milani and, Kai, yeah. Yeah. You and were we, actually that, um, you were actually on the, the stream. Yes, I, I was listening in and watching. In. Yeah. Not for a long, not for a I, I, mean, I like her for, story, though. Oh, yeah. It's very, very informative, especially when it comes to the whole detransitioner thing that the conservatives and the far right are using to weaponize against us. And but there is the, a lot of detransitioning happening. No, not really. They're like less than 1%. And then those yeah, from, the, do, from the data that we know from seven years ago, well, what, which, course, which updates this year. That data only comes out every seven years, and that that that's what I hate about that data. Like, yeah, huh? seven years ago it was one percent, right? And also, the vast majority of those who detransition do retransition later on. Like me, for example, I had to detransition for ten months due to my health, mm-hmm. and then I re- started retransitioning with my HRT. Yeah, and but speaking of that, um, what did I essentially call you a detransition? Were you still living as a woman? Oh yeah. So then you didn't detransition. You just had to stop certain aspects. So even like we we do know there is trans people who don't who don't take medicine, whether it's HRT, who don't get surgeries. Does that mean that when they stop, they detransition? No. You you still lived your life as a woman, even though you stopped taking the HRT. You have to stop taking HRT because you had a medical excuse in order not to take it. But yeah. did that take away from your identity as a trans woman and essentially make you detransition? No. You just stop the HRT. Yeah. But, you know, you to know? a lot of ignorant people, I've heard them say, well, if you're not on HRT, then you're not trans. No, I mean, so trans is essentially like you have this uh, misalignment between the brain and the body. Mm-hmm. So, like, and that's where the gender dysphoria comes in. So there's actually people who have gender dysphoria who are trans who actually choose not to take HRT or surgeries because they're happy in in the way that they present now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have a friend named Morgan. You know, Morgan's great. They they are freaking cool. Uh, Was he a, he was a, uh, they were actually assigned male at birth. But they take a little bit of estrogen to feminize themselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. So to me, Morgan is the epitome of what a non-binary person is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always known them as that, you know, as the very androgynous person, you know, like, especially within music. Musician artists are actually very androgynous. You have, like, Joan Jett, Prince, David Bowie, um, the Sex Pistols, or the New York Dolls and stuff like that. They were just, they were all androgynous, and we didn't mind that, you know. They just... And they embodied like what we are now, essentially. 
So I think that there's nothing, no problem with being androgynous, but this non-binary label, like saying that they are trans, to me, I don't think that non-binary people are trans. I think they fall under the Q or the plus umbrella. And the reason why I say that is because we have we have what's called a gender spectrum, right? There is a line. There's the gender, and a non-binary does not follow that gender spectrum. So therefore, they're not a gender. So like, what are you then? Mm -hmm. They're they're most likely assigned female at birth. Their gender is nothing because they don't adhere to a gender. But their gender identity is that they're non-binary mask or something like that, right? So that that's where I think there's actually three like. There's two sexes, two genders, thousand different gender identities. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, I I had my uh, I had to stop my HRT due to blood pressure, and then once I got my blood pressure under control, uh, my That's doctor. Let's spiral and help out with your blood pressure. Well, uh, yeah, I'm getting to that. Because <laughs> that's um, what it is. It originally was a blood pressure medicine. Right. It's exactly. kind of like Viagra was. Yeah, and they noticed the other stuff for it. So, I've been, I had been having problems with uh, falling and being very dizzy. Like when I stand up, I get really dizzy. And there was a couple times where I went to a store, and I drove. I got out of the car, felt fine, but the moment I started taking steps and walked into that store, I was so dizzy, and could not stay on my own feet, and I fell into a display case. And the people there thought I came in drunk. And as soon as I um, stopped my um, Spyro, I've been feeling like a million bucks. And I've actually had the cops called on me a couple of times. They came out and was made me do field sobriety tests and everything. And I passed. I don't drink all the time. I drink socially. But I hadn't been drinking that day. And... It was it was very scary. So I, you know, my doctor said, "Well, let's try stopping the Spyro." And as soon as I stopped it, went back to normal. Felt like a million bucks. Mm -hmm. See, some some of the medication has adverse effects to certain people. Yeah. So like. Yeah. We know, like I take estradiol. I know one of the uh, one of the things is I could possibly get a stroke. Mm -hmm. I have a higher rate of getting a stroke. And now I'm uh, now I only take two milligrams three times a week. Two milligrams three times a week. So are you injection, a patch, or no? I'm pills. Oh, okay. So I take one pill three times a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I've had surgery, so like, no more Spiro, and I take a progesterone with the with the estradiol when I take it. Yep, I'm on progesterone too. That's it. But as far as the Spiro, no more of that shit. My girlfriend that was, is. That was like the to, best thing. Yeah, you know, my girlfriend's trying to decide which route to go because she's been waiting about three years to get on HRT, and due to her medical history and her family, we had to go and get her a special blood test done. And now that, that blood test came back negative, she's now free and clear to go on HRT. But she's she watches me give myself my shot. And she hates needles. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't do needles. <laughs> Even though I'm covered in tattoos, I don't do single single needles. I and then not. I have to inject myself every two weeks with Humira. They send me a syringe in the mail, and I, I do both sticks on the same day. Um, Humira, that's for your Crohn's? Yes. It was originally created for arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis. And then they discovered that it was helping Crohn's disease patients. So, yeah, I've been on that for, let's say, six months. So no. Those people loved, like, when I was in the hospital, heparin. Oh, my God. I hated that. Yep. Come in, jab. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yep. And then I've been, over the years, with dealing with my Crohn's disease, doctors have been shoving... Um, what is it? Um, been shoving a certain steroid down my throat and it's caused me to gain all this weight. Uh, I used to be really thin and gorgeous. Estrogen will also do that too. 
but not as much as this um prednisone that's what it is prednisone i'm not on a very different steroid i, I take anovar oh because chemically but, i'm a woman yeah so you know back uh like i said there's a there's a lot of things i agree with you on a lot of things i disagree with you on and you're right but I like what, what misinformation am i spreading because that was one of the, one of the things that you said well the drag drag performances drag shows and even drag queen story hour is bad no, i don't even think i don't think that i'm spreading misinformation about it though how so because I, as it stands right now, there are no kid-friendly drag shows. Sure, there are. As a matter of fact, we had one here in my town, and it was very friendly. It was very fun and uh, entertaining. I imagine they can be fun, but like, I'm, you just don't see them. Like when I go to drag shows, they're normally eighteen or twenty-one and above. Okay. I actually well, went I to a drag show when I was up in New York. Like, it was twenty-one and over. Like. There's no yeah. kids there. Yeah. And like I like, said, it, it has to deal with the venues. It has to deal with the promoters. Mm -hmm. It has to deal with the entertainers. Yeah. You know? But for me, not those three people or those three entities have not been on the same page. Because mm -hmm. if it happens once, it's happened more than that. You know, that we that we know. Of. Right. And yeah. Anecdotally. Drag, is, drag is actually essentially being... Do I think it's a amazing art and entertainment? Yes. And it sucks that it's happening to them, but you know, there's the few bad apples that spoiled the bunch. And unfortunately that's what's happening is that there's there's bad apples within the drag community that are ruining it for everybody else. Just like there's bad apples in the trans community, especially kids who think that they, they are trans, but by the time they reach adulthood, they're no longer identified as trans or as the opposite gender that are ruining it for the true trans youth. You know what I mean? So like, and that's, that's ultimately what sucks. And I, like, like I do care about the community, you know, even though like you guys don't want me to be part of the community. Fuck that. I'm still here anyway. So I, I'm not the one saying that. Well, there, there's a bunch of other people. Oh, I'm yeah. fine with, it. you know, I'm fine with it, you know, but like, you know, there's there's bad apples that are spoiling a bunch and it sucks. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's just people just like flipping out, saying, you know, like I, I lose brain cells sometimes when people are talking. Yeah, you know, I can agree that those people do spoil the bunch and especially I the young kids, like these young teenage eighteen. I am a woman. You better call me a woman. Fuck out of here. You are a trans woman, and that's fine. Except let's have the self-validation for yourself instead of getting validated from somebody else. Who cares what anybody else thinks? I really don't care what anybody else thinks. Yeah. And if you have that mindset, because it's all about mindsets. Like, I, I feel like this community doesn't really have the mindset because you, you got you got girls or non-binaries who are assigned female at birth that are on testosterone and they have what's called roid rage. We know what that is. Mm -hmm. And they get it because they're hyped up on testosterone. And they actually have balls to be able to say shit. And we yep. know that. And mm -hmm. we know that. And that's what that's what's actually what's that those those people are actually what's ruining it for us. People calling us trans people like psychotic and that we have a mental illness, that we are delusional, you Predators, know groomers. Yeah. I I see I know what you're talking about and I've experienced it myself and I always tell people uh, within the trans community that try to devalue me as a woman or a trans woman that they're just really emotional. They're firing off with their emotions rather than their brains. Yeah, and I don't they have a lot of emotions go bad. Because a lot of the emotions, especially with us being on HRT, especially some people just starting it. My six months, six, first six months on HRT, I was a fucking loose cannon. 
-hmm. you know, and I freaking hurt. My legs were hurting because fat was moving and stuff. It wasn't exactly pleasant. And then me actually saying stuff that I thought I would never say. Like, why am I thinking this? Mm -hmm. Like, what's up with this? You know? Yeah. I used to say crazy shit. Yeah, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to say crazy shit too, but. Well, I used to think a certain way, say things that I don't agree with now. Um, and in my videos, whenever I uh, respond to a comment, I always tell people, look, you know, I'm one person who is the first to admit when they're wrong. If you bring me the, the data, the facts or whatever, I will be the first to apologize and change the way I think. And now, um, like I said, there's some things that I can't comment on because I don't, I know nothing about them. And if I disagree with some, with someone on a certain topic, I try to as softly as possible. And, and I'm sure you can agree that in a comment section, when you're just typing out words, people can take it the wrong way and they can yeah, take, I a take it out of content. That's why I don't like really leave comments. <laughs> yeah. I don't like, I also don't like texting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not really a big texter. But like for me to be able to to like talk on TikTok to talk on new things is actually very helpful, you know. Mm -hmm. Cuz like could we have had this conversation through text? Yeah. But it would have been very very drawn out. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But like I, I just I basically responded to you because you said that I that I don't debate that I spread misinformation that I am you know am transphobic but I don't think that I see myself as that way because and and from them changing transphobia to not a fear of when every other phobia is a fear of, except for mm -hmm. apparently transphobia, mm -hmm. still a fear. I don't fear myself. I actually love myself. Yeah. I have self-validation. I don't need validation from anybody else. And I personally, you know, thank you for uh, taking the opportunity to have a discussion with me. Because like I said, um, when I saw that green screen um, thing up there saying you don't debate and this and that, I fully anticipated you just ignoring that. And when you reached out to me, I was very, um, not, not necessarily surprised, but sort of kind of excited to be able I to have a platform to be able to, so I have this platform to be able to speak on subjects. Yeah. Like I had nominal Naomi on, I had Olivia or Olivia on, mm -hmm. I had a detransitioner on, I had, Nalani Kai, you know, on great mm -hmm. people, you know, and I expect to get some more people too. Like, yeah, still waiting on Buck to reply. <laughs> yeah, you, you might as well just like, you no, know, no, I talk, I talk to him all the time. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. I we personally don't, cahoots with each other. well, I personally don't like him very much. And well, I did a video with him. <laughs> That's where the, uh, so, I mean, does that, is that the same for everyone? No, but there's, we do know that there's a certain fad within, within this community. I can agree with you on that. Um, especially when it comes to, um, Adolescents, preteens, and teens trying to fit in and mm -hmm. want to accept. I was an emo kid. An emo you know? kid? Yeah, I was emo. I wore eyeliner and painted my nails black. Wore black women's jeans, tight jeans, skinny jeans, and stuff like that. But, like, to be everybody when they go through their puberty feels weird. So, like, that's where, like, the aspect of, like, me saying, like, um, just because you're feeling weird doesn't necessarily mean that you're the opposite gender, you know? Mm -hmm. 
you you probably went through period as a man, but me and you can both say that we had different experiences. Mm -hmm. It's like we have different journeys within our HRT and stuff like yeah. that. But like, was it was it weird? Yes, of course it was weird, because your body's obviously going through changes. And then you'd see that girl who was flat chested, and then when she comes back from school over the summer, she had a puberty, and now she's got big boobs again. Mm -hmm. and we're just like, what happened? You know, some people were actually blessed like that. But I mean, it was obviously always very weird. But to say that it's weird and that means that the kid is trans, say no. You know, the same thing when, where I say that I wasn't born trans. You know, I my my transness basically came out from childhood. Uh, I had an abusive childhood, so. Mm -hmm. But you felt different as a kid, and here you are as an adult, and you are a woman. I don't. I don't. Really, I don't. I don't remember a lot of myself as a kid. No, I, I wouldn't quite say that I'm a woman. I'm a trans woman. Love it. <laughs> you know, but I don't... Honestly, when I'm out in public, people seem perceive me to be a woman. And I think that's the ultimate goal as trans women, as trans people. Is like, we want to emulate fully to what we think, like, um, quote-unquote, the opposite sex is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, I've always liked bigger girls. Um, so like, and I'm a bigger, I guess you could say I'm a bigger woman to begin with. I'm 185 pounds. Like, what? Yeah. Five, seven, 185. Wow. I, I was 170 something when I lost all my weight and I <laughs> looking at me now, I'm a six foot. Uh, well, I don't know how much I weigh now cause I'm pretty sure I lost weight from all this hospital crap, but uh, I'm a six foot, uh, three hundred pound woman, and in high school I used to I used to be a bodybuilder. I was a big person back then. Yeah. And then being a firefighter, always working out on the free time, and um, and of course working now that was great. I love working out. <laughs> yeah, I just wish I had the motivation to do it. But I always fluctuated from 185 to 200 when I was working out. Because if I was doing CrossFit events, I would want to be a little bit uh, lighter. If I was doing strongman events or Olympic weightlifting, I would obviously want to try to jump up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and you said you I like was, bigger women? I've always liked bigger women. Never liked the skinny type. I can never see myself as a skinny person either. I don't know. That freaks me out. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would show you my profile. I mean, as like my profile, but uh, I'm extremely self-conscious right now because I have that ileostomy, and it's yeah. Let me, let me tell you something. It's been really hard on my mental health dealing with all this. I don't feel pretty, cute, uh, gorgeous, anything like that. Um, but then, of course, I, I, I've made quite a few friends in the in the Crohn's community uh, that actually have bags full time, and they're doing their best to try and cheer me up. But yeah, I'm I'm big. Honestly, I'm big obviously, bitch. you're going through some changes, you know, especially like with these surgeries and we're dealing with this disease of Crohn's, but like at the end of the day, just love yourself. Who cares that you got a bag? You should still be able to love yourself. Yeah. I've been hearing that too. <laughs> but, but see, that's what I think like a lot of women just don't 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 have that self esteem. I think, mm -hmm. you know, as men growing up a man, like Sometimes we do have that self-esteem, especially with me. I was an alpha male, so obviously I, of course, had great self-esteem, which is actually translated over pretty, pretty great to hear. Obviously, I still have my mom. You know, there's times where I doubt myself and things like that. You know, but I, I think, like I said, I've, I've 
self validate myself. I don't need validation from anybody else. It's nice to hear, but I don't need it. I, I don't agree. Because if you choose to love yourself, also you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and like I said, it's a mindset. It is. Like a lot of things out there, it's a mindset. You know, I also don't chase goals. I chase happiness. I chase what, what's happy for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I... Uh... I think I'm a pretty reasonable person. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't be as hated as much as people think that I am. But, you know, I do have strong opinions. Mm -hmm. And I think my opinions are override a lot of the... A lot of the opinions of other people because experiences and actually being grounded in like reality and not spreading all this like all this stuff, you know? Yeah. That well, ultimately I think hurts our community even more. Yeah. Well, you definitely are gorgeous. I will give you that. Thank you. And um, like I said, I really appreciate being able to have a conversation with you and especially a civil one. Uh, I agree with you on the fact I that don't, I don't need to not have civil conversations. Yeah. You know, I actually find it weird when I go, I do some live surfing every once in a while and I'll like show up and people will be like, hey, he's here. <laughs> and I'll get blocked or like, Oh, Nikki's here. Oh my God. Mm hmm. And then I'll I'll accept myself up and I'll just come up and say hi. Like yeah. I'm not the I'm not a threat. No. I do find it funny. No, I definitely don't see you as a threat at all. You have a different you have different opinions on things than I do, and I can be civil One with you. One person actually said I helped pull the trigger on that nightclub shooting. Oh my god. But there's there's another there's another topic that nobody wants to talk about. Two days later or three days later, that person identified as a non-binary. Uh -huh. And as soon as that happened, what happened in the news and what happened to everybody else? Nobody said a said a thing. Mm -hmm. Self ID is out there, but we have to respect the person because they say that they're non-binary. But yet the trans community and the LGBTQ person basically shut that person down. But when you when you say that like everybody's inclusive, even the person who did that should be is actually still part of our community, and we have an inclusive community. You know what I mean? Well, I definitely have hey, if they say they're non-binary and we're going with the self ID stuff, that there's a lot of other people out there who self ID, then we also have to include that person into the community. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I definitely have my opinion on that shooter. Um, there's been evidence that came out from people who know him, friends and neighbors, and all he would ever do was put down, make fun of, berate the LGBT community. And when he's facing hate crime charges, all of a sudden he's he's like, well, I'm non-binary. And honestly, I don't think he even said that. I think it was his lawyers. But the judge gave those lawyers three Three chances to verify that this shooter, accused shooter, was non-binary, and they did not jump on it at all. So therefore, I don't believe he's non-binary. He's just trying to escape more charges, mm -hmm. harsher charges. But the thing is, is that he said he was non-binary, and since we're inclusive in this community, and we let everybody else who self IDs into the community... This person is still part of the community because they said that they were non-binary. Well, <laughs> I like I said, I personally don't I don't agree with with it, and I think it was just a ploy for his lawyers to get out of a hate crime. Um, now, I do um, definitely pay clo close attention to prisoners, inmates. Um, especially the ones that come up in the news, uh, whether or not they are, in fact, what they say they are. If there's a history behind it, then sure. 
yeah, I'll agree with you. But if there's no history on it and you just all of a sudden come out just to escape charges, and I'm like, mm, no. Or the guy who said he was a trans woman went to a women's prison, impregnated what two of them? Mm-hmm. And wasn't that wasn't he? If we're thinking of the same person, wasn't he already a serial rapist? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, and I and again, self identification. Yeah, this is where it comes into the into that narrative. And if we're allowing people to self-identify as, as what they are. <clears throat> well, I, I live in a prison city. Well, prison slash military city. Um, we've got a big major base up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, two penitentiaries. And one privately. Or I don't even know what, it, what to call it. It's a private incarceration facility. There's oh. like literally so no hotel. windows on this building. And when I worked at this um, liquor slash tobacco shop, I, there was this one employee who had come in to get his cigarettes and he was wearing a uniform. Um, and he was telling me, yeah, my, my company pays me more to be a guard than the other penitentiaries that are here. And he told me it was a private facility and that's all I know about it. Because there's no windows on this building. Absolutely none. I guess they don't want people to see outside. Yep. Well, Nikki, um, it was a great pleasure to talk with you. Yep. And like I said, you're a gorgeous individual. I had a wonderful time talking to you. Yeah, if you ever want to come up and discuss, you know, I like having varying opinions. Mm-hmm. You know, but... To just stitch me and say that I'm transphobic and I don't know. misinformation. No. You know, I, of course I'm going to see that. I'm going to see that. And I'm obviously going to respond to it. Like the person who called me a turf. Actually, if you edited the video, I laughed at her. Mm-hmm. Because I'm essentially living rent-free in her head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever. I got to hop off here because I've got some hungry children. <laughs> yeah, children. I got to get in bed. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, big big hugs to you, and big I look forward to, to talking to you again. All right. So as you guys all know, I'm Nikki Starkiller. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Uh, Tara was actually really nice to talk to. You can follow me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, all at Nikki Starkiller, and I am Nikki Dot Starkiller and Nikki Dot Killer One on TikTok. And as always, 